Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Something a little bit different. We've got Tekken's latest release. This is the 1 to 350th scale Zeppelin P Class Airship. And this is a first because I don't think we've ever reviewed an airship before here on the channel. So you see, nice bit of box art on there. It's not a massively huge box. The box itself is only sort of 30 centimeters. Uh, and for something of this size, I thought the box would be a lot bigger. So it'd be interesting to see how it breaks down. Uh, anyway, it says uh, detailed static model, uh, five different types of markings included, and you get a little bit of photo edge. So there's some of the markings. We've got a nice camo pattern, or we've got sort of the banded one down in there. Again, for around about the sort of 1915, 1916 era. Uh, we've got the thing down in here, so we've got uh, your kit number for this one. Is that the kit number? Where's the kit number? Kit number? Kit number? Uh, sorry, kit number for this one is 6002. So there we go, you can see down there. And on this side, as you can see, we've actually got the breakdown. So that's how they've done it. That makes sense now, how they fitted it inside the uh, box. So it's almost split in two. There's not many. There's only actually, it looks like four sprues, but we do get a nice bit of photo etched down in there. And we've got the markings. So in the box, we are greeted by, oh, so we've got a little, looks like a clear stand for that one. And there's a, a little bit on there. So actually, that's quite a nice touch. Uh, we've got some of the parts. Just hang on there, it's got the tail planes and that. The all important giant ribbed sections. And to be honest, they are really, really thick. That's a lot thicker than I thought they were going to be. So that's quite nice. And we've got the front end. Some of the details down in here. We've got the little box. So down in here, we've got the manual. And obviously we've got the decals and the actual photo etch. So we can peel our way in here. Let's get this out without getting stuck to the back. So, starting off as always with the old instructions. It's a different way of doing it. But there we go. So, we've got the actual call out, say, same for the box as you can see down in there. So, we've got the top part of the actual, the main structure of it has defensive guns at the top. So, it looks like we've got three machine guns or two machine guns up there, three machine guns uh, mounted up on the sort of forward edge of that one up there. Then we've got the gondola and this sort of bracket that fits it underneath, as you might imagine, going down under there. So, that's the forward gondola. And then it looks like we've got a rear gondola system as well, which is going to fit at the back end. And then down in here, I think it's talking about the actual stand points of how it's going to fix on and then obviously putting on some of the details onto this one so we've got the sidebars all being fitted down onto it so this is how it actually connects and hangs underneath the actual main uh, airship itself and again that plate being fitted down underneath the rear end so we've got the tail planes and the rudders and obviously the control surfaces look like they're separately molded as well so you could have them deflected off and we've got some of the details around the actual superstructure as well so some of the actual engine mounting brackets as those get fitted onto this one then again, as I said before, we've got that rear gondola system being fitted down onto this one as that one goes in, and we've got the other sides for the engines being fitted onto this one. Then the engines, to be honest, they're very simple as they were in the day. You've literally just got a situation of the motor sort of housing onto it and the actual prop being fitted. So that's those fitted on just like that. And then it said that display stand is going to fit in the back just like that as it comes through. So again, very nicely sort of de uh, detailed onto this one. Marking wise, actually quite interesting. So as you can see, we've got the bandings of this one down in here. So this is one from 1915. Uh, around Belgium so that's that one and then obviously we've got one over here uh, for Germany 1915 as well and again different type of banding and system onto this one we've got this gorgeous one over here in the camo from 1916 again so really nice details down in there and then over on here we've got this one which actually is halfway between sort of weathered as well which is a really nice look at the way of doing that one and we've got this other one with sort of more panelling on there for the different sort of you know fabrics being used looks like it may be a black underside and then obviously the lighter shades on the top again very nicely done so again these are later ones here 1916 1917 as you make your way through and a nice little head-on shot down there at the back so that's quite nice photo etch as we said we get this piece down in here which actually is very nice indeed so as you can see this is where this all this mechanics for the actual engine being housed onto it will be so that's actually a nice touch decals themselves i think they're going to be not many because luckily there's not a lot of stencil data in those days but there we go you can see that one as well so that's down in there that's very nice 
whilst we've got it here we can have a look at these flare parts so this is not so much for the gondola itself this is for the the stand and as you can see it's very small i thought we'd have a bigger footprint area and then we've got these uprights which is going to cup the actual underside of the airship itself so that's actually quite a nice little touch with those right into the plastic so we are greeted by if we get in Again, Tacom's plastic is their sort of plastic all on its own. It's a really nice grey, but also their moulding is very solid. Just to talk about it, you see the thickness of these moulds. This isn't thin. It's, you know, this is proper solid uh, heavy duty as well. So it's got quite a bit of weight to it. Uh, but as you can see, really nice with the texture for the sort of ribbing working right the way around on this one. And then again, over on here, you can see we've got those defensive gun positions and then some of the smaller parts. And it looks like these may be the fins down at the back. But generally, as you can see, that's actually really very, very nice. And again, there's no sign of any sink marks on that. But to be honest, the thickness of that plastic, I'm not surprised. So that's very, very nice indeed. Then we've got the other end. So this is the rear fuselage so that's this one just here and as you can see again you've got the ribbing texture in the actual join which is quite nice so that'll slot in and again good heavy duty very very solid you're not going to worry about taking these out because it's not going to need it but it is absolutely rock hard <laughs> so that's nice and then last up you've got let's get in here the fins for the rear part as you can see uh, and then obviously you've got your gondolas so we've got the sort of the front and the rear gondolas down in here again the windows are solid so you'd have to paint them in and then we've got these plates which are going to fit onto the underside of it as well of the ship but the detail and the ribbing is raised ribbing raised detail you say it's got that sort of stretch fabric look looks all very nice definitely very nicely done as you can see there you have it to be honest a really quick review because there's not many sprues to it it's big old parts which to be honest with you i'm happy with if this was multi-part and you had to build it up in sections that would be an absolute nightmare so luckily it is just in two parts you can get it together and that way you got two nice seam lines again another nice touch with it because of the thickness of the plastic you can put a good amount of glue in there properly weld it together and then that way you can sand it back and then blend it and polish it ready for painting and it will be totally seamless then if it had been thin plastic Plastic, then obviously you've got a few problems about wearing through it and things like that but because it's not as good solid quality plastic I honestly don't think you're going to have a problem with it one of those things never thought about building an actual airship in my life if I'm honest with you it's nothing that's ever crossed my mind but actually seeing that it's one of those ones when you think about it it is an era of aviation that I think is totally overlooked because that's basically got superseded very, very quickly in the uh, early uh, sort of, you know, 19th century. But the thing is, it's one of those areas which you can go back on now and actually do as a model. And then obviously with the weathering that goes into these, there's quite a bit of detail onto this surface you could put through the different camo patterns and things like that. There is a couple of different versions of this kit out available as well. So if you wanted different markings, so forth and so on, but definitely a pioneering age of aviation that I think has been sadly overlooked and it's nice to see a mainstream injection molded kit available for it as well and it's in one to 350 as we said before you can actually line that up with ships as well so if you're into naval stuff obviously these things are used with you know u-boats and with you know uh, ships as well and things like that so you could actually do a very nice diorama with a ship with one of these above it which I think would be a really nice touch as well so there we go that's Tacom's latest release the 135th scale Zeppelin P-class airship